All right, moving along on our path towards eventual flash write protection, we need to learn about chipsets. These are chips that have some of the chunks of hardware that we care about as we make our way towards flash writing. So in Architecture 2001, we said that, you know, when you want to know where ports come from for port IO, one does not simply read the Intel software development manuals. One reads the chipset documentation. And so we had said that a previous architecture was that you had CPUs, MCHs, which are memory controller hubs, and ICHs, I.O. controller hubs. That architecture generally has moved towards the CPU and a platform controller hub. And then over time, things continue to look more and more like a system on a chip, which may have some extra data sheet associated with it. So ports are generally in ICH data sheets where systems have this architecture, PCH data sheets where they have this one, and for things that look more sockish, some generations of CPUs have an IO data sheet, although it has then you know, started to move back into PCH data sheets. So when we revisit port IO later in the class, this will be an example of where we're gonna be looking. Now this is out of scope for this class. We're not going to consider things that are this old because that's over a decade old and we wanna stay on more recent and relevant things. Things that you're more likely to be running on your particular system as you take this class. But it still helps to understand a little bit of the history of how we got here. And so to that end, here was the older MCH based things, memory controller hubs. Those were actually called a chipset in and of themselves, even though it was not a chipset, it was a single chip. So sometimes chipset refers to just kind of whatever the thing is that's occupying the space below the processor, and it could be a single chip rather than a chipset. Certainly in the PCH case, as we'll learn about, it's still called the chipset, but yet it's a single chip. But back then it was an actual chipset, even though this was called the chipset. So, you know, just take the, take the language with a grain of salt that it's not always going to be intuitive. So back then you had the memory controller hub, which had direct access to the memory. So the processor did not actually have direct access to the memory. Had to go through the front side bus to get to this chipset or memory controller, DRAM controller, in order to get to memory. Then you had the IO controller hub, which had access to a bunch of the slower, low speed uh, input output interfaces, as well as some of the PCI interfaces. In this sort of architecture, this was uh, unofficially typically called a north bridge, south bridge sort of configuration. So sometimes you'll hear about the north bridge that would refer to an MCH and a south bridge would be an ICH. And so ultimately it was the job of the BIOS when it starts running on the processor to fiddle with bits on these various chips and configure them into the way that the processor wants to execute. Things like initializing access to memory, discovering PCI devices, and so forth. Now this architecture changed over time because the interface between the MCH and the ICH was a bit of a bottleneck. So I found this delightful picture of M&Ms which perfectly illustrates a bottleneck. So that was turning into a bottleneck. And so what Intel did was they took some of the stuff from the ICH and merged it in with the MCH. And then they took some of the stuff from the MCH and they merged it in with the processor, things like memory access, where you would of course want your processor to have as quick of access as possible. So bits from here merged into there, bits from there merged into there. And that leaves you with more of our modern architecture, which is the use of the platform controller hub. So you have a processor, you now have this faster DMI2 interface, so a little bit less of a bottleneck here now. And so Intel did this around 2008 and AMD did this around 2003. And so it starts sort of merging and things start looking more and more like a system on a chip as chips get combined into single packages. But the stuff that we tend to care about in this class are things that were attached to the ICH in that architecture and the PCH in the modern architecture. Things like the spy flash chip. That's where the BIOS is stored on modern systems. Firmware hub is where it used to be stored on older systems, but we're mostly going to care about the spy flash and the LPC bus only because there's some legacy chunk of hardware in here that still has to do with spy flash access controls because of how the access controls used to work. And if we dug even deeper into the particulars of the inside of a PCH, we would again see those bits that we're gonna care about in this class. Things like the PCI Express interface, the SPI interface, or the LPC slash firmware hub interface.
This is sort of the more common view that you would see in embedded systems where you start digging down into a particular chip and you see all the various lines that are available corresponding to pins on a CPU. And just because the picture of M&Ms came with a second picture of M&Ms, I have to point out that this DMI2 interface allows for much more data to go across this interface. So if you thought that those looked like system on a chip, well, starting in the fourth generation CPUs, they really looked like a system on a chip. But if you dug deeper into this, you would see that although there are things like the BIOS that we still care about all attached to, you know, nominally attached to the processor, when you look at some subsequent Intel marketing information, you'll actually see that what you're really looking at is a multi-chip package. So if a CPU and a PCH looks like this, then you could have a multi-chip package where they just basically take the PCH and they slap it on the same package with the CPU. And that would be a U series. And this would be the Y series more for, you know, ultra portables and things like that. So basically it's not really a sock at this point. It's not a single system on a chip. It's two chips on a package. And indeed the eighth generation diagram shows that a little bit more explicitly. Processor and PCH, two chips on the same package. And this is not like an overlay by me. This is an actual screenshot from the uh, data sheet showing that yes, there's all these things. There's flash, embedded controllers, flash, TPM, PCI, camera, blah, blah, blah. All of this attached to this multi-chip package. But then when you get to the 10th generation core chips, you'll see that the Intel documentation refers to them as actually being on the same die. That means that these are the same piece of silicon. They're not two pieces of silicon put on the same package. They're actually etched out of the same piece of silicon, but they're actually still logically separated, you know, chunks of hardware, chunks of design that were originally intended for a separate PCH in which Intel could still sell as a separate PCH and manufacture on their own chip, they're just all manufactured onto the same slice of silicon if it happens to be for one of the mobile form factors. So it's getting right up to the edge of being a system on a chip, except they're still separated, there's still gonna be a bottleneck, there's still gonna be something like a DMI interface between these two logically separated hardware units. Intel does actually make proper system on a chips. These are typically the Atom series processors, more used in embedded systems rather than laptops or servers or anything like that. And there you really do have everything, all of the hardware units, all in a single chip, all connected through some internal bus. In this class, we mostly focus on the desktop or server grade processors, which you are more likely to be running. Uh, and just personally, you know, I haven't encountered uh, Atom processors that much. I believe at some point they actually uh, discontinued them, you know, sometime in the last few years, although they're still, you know, all, that not, name has been retired, but they're still, you know, utilizing that technology in certain situations.